9.15, and I just want to ask you, um, before we move any farther, if you haven't already, pull out your encounter card uh, or your program. On the bottom of your program is an encounter card. We ask everybody, everybody to fill that out. Nobody does it alone. And if you want to do it electronically, you can pull out your phone. You can download the app even while we sit here right now. And um, you can fill out that encounter card on your phone, on the app. Um, we would love to have a record of your visit this morning. Excited that you're here, especially if you are a guest with us. Very, very excited to have you with us today um, as we start a brand new series called Consumed. I feel like I need to say this. My name is Russ, and I'm addicted to technology, right? I know, I know I'm know. i not going to ask you to raise your hand if you're addicted to technology because if you, whether or not you raise your hand, I would say that a lot of us probably struggle. Even if you're not addicted, we probably struggle with technology, right? Technology is something that we can be consumed with. We live in a culture where, where, where listen, you have in your pocket or in your purse the s- more power, more power in your pocket or your purse than, than, than the power that put the men on the moon back in the 1960s. I mean, it's amazing how fast technology grows. Now, when I was growing up, I had the, I, I'm, I'm very thankful that I grew up in an age where advanced technology meant that I had a cord attached to my phone that was long enough that I could talk to my girlfriend while I was laying on the couch, right? That, that was advanced technology, that the cord was long enough. We didn't have, you know, cell phones and all the computers and the whole deal. And, and so, but now we are faced with an amazing uh, onslaught of, of technology that, that just is so easy uh, to consume us. It, it grows so fast. Let's, here, here's something that, that's so crazy. Um, I will pull out my phone just to look up a phone number, and then 30 minutes later, I can't remember why I pulled it out of my pocket. I'm like, oh, that's a cute picture on Facebook, Instagram. Oh, I didn't know their kids were that old. I mean, and before you know it, you spent 30 or 40 minutes doing a deep dive, and you can't even remember what happened and why you pulled your phone out in the first place, right? Been there? It's crazy how technology will just absolutely consume us, and we can find ourselves addicted to it in the snap of a finger. And you don't even know you're addicted. I mean, we're just, we're consumed with it. I had, I had a parent I was talking to the other day. They said, they said Russ, um, man, I'm so glad you're doing this series. I am so glad. My kids are going to be sitting there, they're, they're, and I want you to just let it rip. Let, it rip. let them have it, right? And I'm thinking the whole time, uh, you probably need this as much as they do, right? And, and he, even, he acknowledged that. He said, man, I know I need it. But, but he said, man, I want my kids to hear about this, this issue with technology and how it can consume us. We're tempted to think that way. We're tempted to think, man, I can't wait for my kids to hear this, or I can't wait for my wife to hear this, or I can't wait for my husband to hear this. And there's this danger. I call it the the shovel theology syndrome, where we think, man, if I hear something and it's good, I want to shovel it back to the person that's behind me because I don't need it. That's that's the danger of 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 a series like this or a morning like this. Um... Uh, as we dive into this series, before we move any further, let me let me celebrate a little bit what happened this past week at Easter. Um, as we, yeah, you know, I meant I meant to share this very first thing. Uh, thank you for being a generous church and providing so far uh, with, with this new parking area. Last last Sunday, including Saturday, Saturday service over five services. We had more people involved in worship than we've ever had on any given weekend in the history of Church of the Grove. We had over 1,100 people uh, that took part in Easter services between here and our social circle campus. And so it, it, it was crazy in here last week at 11 a.m. It was absolutely bananas. We pulled every chair out in the building and, and, and every parking area. We've got a new parking area out there if you haven't been around. And, and they haven't put asphalt on it yet because um, some of y'all hadn't given it yet. And so... Um, 
and so we're, we're waiting for you to give so we can keep paving. And, but if we hadn't had that parking area, you, you like how I did that, don't you? Uh, if, we, if we didn't have that parking area, it, would, it, would have, it was crazy because that parking lot was full. This little parking area up here, this gravel was full. Every space, and we had cars double parked. So, so, so praise God for that. And, um, and so we had some incredible decisions, saw God move in some great ways, and some people that had never been to church that were here and people that had not been to church in a long time that were here. And so as we begin this series, we want to continue to move forward with what God's called us to do. Now, here, here's, what I, here's what I want to tell you. I want to give you some stats about technology that, that are kind of interesting. Do you know that there's more people with smartphones in the world today than there are working toilets? I mean, that, that's a cra- according to Forbes magazine, a Ford, Forbes magazine, more people with smartphones in the world than working toilets. And so the average adult in the U.S. spends roughly eight and a half hours a day looking at a screen. The average person, the average person now spends more time on their phone and computer than they do sleeping. Forty percent of smartphone users check their phone during the night if it dings or goes off. And so children age 5 to 16 spend six and a half hours a day on average, in front of a screen. 50% of teens in the U.S. admit to feeling addicted to smartphones. 69% of parents and 78% of teens check their devices at least hourly. 54% of children have felt at times that their parents are addicted to technology. Now, you know there's a new fear? It's called nomophobia, and it's the fear of leaving your phone at home. It's the fear of not having your phone. Now, how many of you have, have left your house and gotten halfway to where you were planning to go and realized, oh my goodness, I've left my phone, and you thought in your mind, how am I going to make it through the day? You thought that. Now, some of you are like me. You leave, and you get halfway away, and you realize you don't have your phone, and you're like, thank you, God, nobody can call me, Right? Right? And so you're like, I'm leaving it at home. Thank you. That's, that's great. And so there's this new fear, fear of not having your phone with you. And so number one thing cited is making it more difficult to raise kids today in our culture is technology. It's technology. Look, here's interesting. They estimate, they, I don't know who they is, right? It's researchers. Researchers estimate that the average person will take 25 thousand selfies in their lifetime which means listen if that's the average that means somebody else has taken a whole lot of selfies because I don't take any I don't I don't I, now I will take one with somebody else with me but isn't it crazy how people will take picture after after picture of themselves and 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 you don't do it in church but but you take selfie after selfie and it and it and, it, and, it, and it's crazy so over the next three weeks count today we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about technology and how easy it is to be consumed. And we're going to look at technology through the lens of Scripture, which is interesting because when the Bible was written, you say, well, man, they didn't even have smartphones, they didn't have technology. So how can the Bible speak to technology? And I promise you it can. Here's the big idea for this morning, big idea. We must rule over technology instead of technology ruling over us. We must rule over technology instead of technology ruling over us. And we're going to look at an Old Testament passage. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 10, and we're going to be in Genesis chapter 11. At at, at a little passage, you think, how in the world can an Old Testament passage speak to our modern-day issue with technology? I'm going to show you here in a second. I'm going to show you. Genesis chapter 10 and Genesis chapter 11, if you want to go ahead and open your Bibles up there. And here's kind of, here's what I want you to see first, is that technology is not good or bad. Technology is just neutral. We're not a church that bashes, that that, that bashes things just for the sake of bashing things. That's just not who we are. It's not who I am. So technology is not good or bad. Technology is, is neutral. As a matter of fact, Technology can be very good. Technology can be a great thing. Technology can take the gospel around the world without you even having to leave your home. Technology. I know pastors 
that, that mentor and help plant churches without ever having to go to places like India or Asia or Africa. They do it because of modern technology. I'm able to stay in touch with church planters on the other side of the world, and, 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 and I don't necessarily have to leave my house. I can, I can Zoom or I can FaceTime and I can, I can use technology for meetings. Me, technology can be a great thing. That phone hold, you're holding in your hand, it can be a great way to connect with your family. It, it, it can be used to share Jesus. It can be used for a lot of great things, but technology can also be a bad thing. That same phone can be used to access pornography. That same phone can be, can be used to connect you with somebody that you shouldn't be connected with. That same phone can be used. So technology is not necessarily good or bad. It's neutral. It can be good and it can be bad. And so technology, we need to understand it. We're not bashing it. It's just, it's just a fact of life. Texting. Texting can be something that, that is great for us to be, to be connected with other people. I love texting because I can say, I, I, I can have a short conversation with somebody through a text uh, conversation that I know if I get on the phone with them, it's going to be 30 minutes of my life wasted. And when I say that, I mean that with the love of Jesus, right? <laughs> so texting can be the greatest thing in the world. But texting while you're driving can be one of the worst things in the world. You know that texting while you're driving is six times more dangerous than driving under the influence of alcohol? Listen. But stats and research tell us that 50% of people in American society still text while they drive. So, so, so technology can be good. Technology can be bad. Uh, some of you pulled out your Bible it pulled out your phone to, to look up scripture with me just a second ago. But that same phone can access things and websites and pornography and other things that it shouldn't. And, and so, so, so we're going to dive in. Genesis chapter 10. Let, let's just dive in and, then, and, and I'll explain what we're going to talk about here in a second. Genesis 10, 8 through 12. Cush was the father of Nimrod. What a great name. Cush was the father of Nimrod who became a mighty warrior on earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why it is said, like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first centers of the kingdom were Babylon, Uruk, Akkad, Kalne, and Shinar. Uh, from that land, he went to Assyria, where he built Nineveh, uh, rehoboth Ir, Kalah, and Rezin, which is between Nineveh and Kalah, which is a great, City. So, so here's what I want you to see. Nimrod was really the first imperial king. He was the first king that was not only a leader over a city-state, but he was a leader over a kingdom that was established um, beyond where he lived, beyond, beyond just one little kingdom. He, he established many, many cities into one kingdom. And, which is funny, what a, what a name, right? Because we, 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 how many of you have heard that word Nimrod, that name Nimrod used in, in, in not so popular or not so positive uh, circumstances? You say, man, what a, right. And it, it, it's, 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 so it's funny. So none of, I, how many of you named your child? Anybody have a Nimrod child? How many of you have a child who is a Nimrod? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. So, so. So this is a negative name, and, and, it, and it means, you know, idiot or, or somebody that's not very intelligent. But it was the name of probably the very first king that established a kingdom that exceeded his geographic area. And so, so Nimrod was known as this great king. He may be, may be even known as the first mighty ruler of, on the earth in the area that we would now know, know as Iraq, really what we would call the cradle of civilization. And so it was 
during Nimrod's day, during his, uh, his kingship, his leadership, that a new technology was established. New technology was created. New advancement of the day. Look at Genesis. Go, go to 11, verse 1. It says, now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As people moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar, and they settled there, and they said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. So up to this point in history, the primary building uh, tool was stone. It was stone, and it wasn't, it wasn't cut stone. They didn't have the technology that we have today. They didn't have the technology that they would even have in, in just generations not too far in the future from here. And so they, here's the problem. They would, they would gather stone, and they would build, build structures with stone, but because of stone not being, being uh, manufactured, it could not be stacked high enough to build structures that would stand very tall. Up until the day of Nimrod, this new technology was the brick. The brick. It, it was the brick. And, and see, stones could only stack uh, so high because they, they weren't cut. They weren't cut the same. And so they couldn't stack all the same. And so it would be uneven. So they could only go so high while remaining stable enough to build large structures until they discovered how to manufacture brick. Getting, getting all the materials putting bricks, manufacturing them rapidly, the same size, and, and they would bake them in kilns so they would be strong enough to build structures. There's even structures in the Middle East today that, that are thousands of years old because of this technology. Now, how many of you remember the very first cell phone that came out? I, re I worked for a man, Bernie, named Tony Witzel. I don't know if you remember Tony, a guy, a guy that we went to church with. And I remember when he showed up on the job, we worked construction. Yes, I, I did manual labor. We worked construction, and Tony showed up with a phone about this size and about this, this weight. He had a pouch he stuck it in. I'm like, man, how's he going to stand up and do work with that? And so he's like, hey, watch this. Watch this, Russ. And so he, you know, hey, can y'all deliver the concrete at such such time? And I mean, he, start, he called his wife. I'll be home at 6 for dinner. I mean, he, he started, I'm like, this is crazy. But this was about the size of the first cell phone. Y'all remember that? Anybody remember a phone like this? And so, and so that, was, that was a brick. And so Nimrod used this technology to build structures. And then, and, and, and listen, it was the hottest thing of the day. I mean, it was, it, was, it was new technology just like we experienced new technology. They got excited about what they could do with the technology of the day. I mean, they were so excited about it. They, they would camp out down at the Mall of Babylon because they knew that that's the, the mall would open and they could pick up their new brick, 1.0. <laughs> isn't, isn't it crazy what people do with new technology? Here's what I do. I wait for you to buy the new one, and when you get tired of it, I buy yours for cheaper, and you keep paying for, you keep, you're still paying for it while I've got it. <laughs> I like that. And so Nimrod came up with this, this new technology, and it changed their lives. It was a status symbol for Nimrod's day. But here's what we know. Bricks are not good. Bricks are not bad. Bricks are neutral. They can be 
They can be very useful for us to have shelter, for us to stay safe, for us to have, have security. But in Nimrod's day, they did something else. Here, 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 put this in your notes. Write this down. Technology changes culture, but we decide whether the change is bad or good, whether it's positive or whether it's negative. Technology changes culture, but we have in our humanity the power, the ability that God gives us to decide whether technology is positive or whether it's negative. Let's see how they used their modern technology. Verse 4, then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens. Listen, look at this next line. Underline this, star it, circle it, so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the earth. They decided that they're going to take the modern technology of their day, listen, to make a name for themselves. Make a name for themselves. That's the problem, is that we take what God provides. It's neither good nor bad in and of itself. But if we use it in a way that benefits us outside of the means and outside of the plan, outside of the mission for which God provides, then we are in danger of bringing glory to ourselves bringing reproach upon ourselves, uh, ruining our own reputation, ruining our name, and, and in making a name for ourselves, it becomes about us rather than the glory of God. They decide, hey, we're, we're going we're gonna to build a tower. Now, this is, this is pre this is pre-Judaism. This is before God establishes the relationship with Abraham. As a matter of fact, this chapter leads up to the chapter where God enters into a covenant relationship with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 that leads to the people that would become known as Israel. As a matter of fact, this whole story leads to the scattering of people where Abraham would be willing to to listen and obey and to take up his fa- take his family and begin the journey out of the what we call the cradle of civilization along the fertile crescent to the promised land. And the nation would be born out of that. And so God takes this, this moment where technology is used to make our name great, to make humanity great rather than to make God's name great and whether to make God's name glorified, he takes it, it's right when he scatters people all over the globe. He confuses the languages all based on what people do with modern technology. Let me say this. The problem is not your phone. The problem is not technology. The problem is not the TV. The problem is is not your computer. The problem is not technology. Technology is neutral. Technology can be good. What's the problem? What's the common denominator? The human heart. The human heart. It's the human heart. God God created us in, in his image. He created us for relationship. He created us to, 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 to be representatives on this planet, to bring glory to his name, to share with other people what Christ has done for us. But it's the human heart. It's deceitfully wicked in every way. The human heart says, says I know better than God. Adam says, hey, I, I, God, thanks for your plan. Hey, thanks for, for you know, this beautiful Garden of Eden. But, but Adam and Eve, Adam, Adam, uh, I can, along with Eve, can, can figure this out way better than you can, God. And they rebelled against God. 
This, the Apostle Paul said the wages of sin, the wages of rebelling against God is death, separation from God, no longer living in the paradise. And so everything we see in this life, all of our modern issues in this world results from sin. Romans 5, 12 says that, that death is the result of sin. And all of, all of humanity's issues comes from humanity's rebellion against a holy God that knows better and he created us for him. He loves us. He cares for us. He's got a plan for you. And even if you've wandered away from him, he will take every bit of the bad in your life and he wants to redeem it. The human heart is the problem. We think we know better. And so we can take ancient modern technology or we can take the, the, the technological advances that we have today, which is computers and, and, and phones and, and, and all, all, all the things that we have, and we can become consumed with it and make it about us rather than about Jesus addressed it. Mark chapter 7, verse 20. Jesus says, he went on. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly. All these evils come from inside and they defile a person. So technology is not the issue. The issue is us. The issue is the human heart. It's the real issue. And so I could give you a bunch of rules about technology. I could, I could even, I could give you some good stuff. And we're going to talk about some stuff over the next couple of weeks. And, and for those of you parents that, that, that say, man, I'm so, I need something. Man, my kids are out of control. The technology is all, blah, 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 it's all, it's crazy. I could give you all the help that you desperately want, but it's not going to change a heart. The biggest help was offered to us through the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ that redeems the wickedness, that, that changes our heart. He comes and indwells us through the power of the Holy Spirit, and he redeems us, and he can change the human heart. Listen, write this down. If we don't drive technology... Technology will drive us. Technology will drive us. Now here are some practical steps this morning. Here's four questions to ask as we go into this um, next two weeks. And, I, and I'm also going to give you a, a, a number that you can text. And, and it's, we're going to enter into a 21-day Kind of journey where we're going to send out some real practical things and some some things for your spiritual nourishment as well regarding technology but here's four questions to ask when it comes to technology you can apply to your life and your family number one have i asked god's advice about my device have i asked god's advice about my device you say, well, man, the, the Bible's an ancient document, so how can we ask God's advice? Well, I just gave you a story that if you read this story and you look at modern technology through the lens of this story, you, you get some good wisdom. God offers us wisdom. He offers us. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. And so proverbial Wisdom, ask God's advice about your device or devices. Number two, do I rule over my device or does my device rule over me? And, and so we 
We were created to take dominion. We were created not for creation to rule over us. We were created to subdue and to rule over the created. And so addiction is when something that might have even been created for good now takes control over your life. And it no longer is for good. It begins to control you. Do I rule over my device or does my device rule over me? You know, people get, are, are mistaken. They say, well, money is the rule of all evil. But is that what the Bible says? No, it's the love of money that is the root of all evil. Same with technology. No, let me, let me tell you that, that I, I'm, I'm with you. I am one of the nerds that will follow and listen for when Apple will do a reveal online. And I can't go to San Francisco, but I will watch it online to see what I want to get next. See what I'm wearing? I, I'm, an, I'm an Apple geek. I understand that. And, and, whether, and you may be a PC geek or, or whatever it is. So I, I get technology. That's the, I struggle with it. My wife will tell you that that is one of my struggles. There she is nodding. I didn't, even want to, I didn't even want her to be here for this sermon. She's like, what are you preaching on? I said, honey, it's, it's, it's Calvinism and Arminianism and super lapsarianism. It's just really boring theological stuff. You don't even need to come today. Because I know once I share this sermon, I'm accountable. Number three. <laughs> What problem does my device solve, and what problem does it create? What problem does your device solve, and what does it create? Listen, I, I've, I've got three kids, and one's 21. Abigail's almost 18. She's 17, will be 18 here in a couple weeks. Caleb's 14. And so we, we've... We've gone through this whole deal, and, and I'm telling you, there is a demon that just comes out of nowhere and possesses your kid when they get to the age that they think they should have a phone. Can I get an amen from the parents? And you, God forbid you punish them and take it away. I mean, it is... It is I mean, it's like, what? Come out, Lucifer. <laughs> and so there, there are some things you can do, but listen, it's, it's, it's a human heart issue. So what, what problems does the device solve? What does it create? And then number four, what do I need to change? What do I need to change? Psalm 139 says, search me. Search me, O God, know my heart, test me, and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. And parents, it starts with us. Just, you know, before we start pointing our finger at our kids, you know, we, we've got we've to be willing to start with ourselves and, re, and, and, and ask the tough questions about, about our addiction and about our issue. And here, here's what I want. Here's, we're going to pray in a second. And I'm, gonna, I'm just walking you through a time of prayer as we close this service. But if you are interested, I want you to text the word consume to this number that, that's on the screen. Just text it. It's, it's, it's not, there's not a gimmick, you know, but it's just, but it will allow you to join us in a 21-day journey to address some of these issues and to nourish us spiritually through it as we navigate the next three weeks. Now, here's what I want you to do as we close this time together. I want us to pray together. I want us to pray together. So just bow your heads. Bow your heads, and let's pray. Let's ask the Lord to lead us and guide us this morning as we think about today and as we think about these next couple of weeks um, and really asking for God to give us some insight 
even divine insight in how he would speak to us, how he wants us to navigate these next couple of weeks. What is it that we need to come and bring before him this morning? This, is, this message is not a, a, a message about guilt or condemnation. This message is about redemption. And, and there may even be tremendous pain because maybe your family, maybe your marriage, maybe your very life and home has been absolutely turned upside down because of technology. It, there may have been a marriage or, or, or a family that has been broken because of, of somebody being reunited with somebody else on, uh, on the internet. Or maybe, maybe your heart's broken because of the addiction that you deal with. Many, many men struggle with the issue of pornography and, and women as well. But primarily, those of us that are males had struggled with the pull of pornography. And so today is not about guilt with that. It's about freedom. It's about, it's, it's about honestly just admitting what your issue is and coming before a holy God that has the power to deliver you and to set you free. And remember, at the heart of today and the heart of this issue is Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, that has the power to save you. He spilled his blood on Good Friday. And he came out of an empty tomb on that Sunday, that first Easter. And that cross is a symbol of his payment for your freedom. That empty tomb is a symbol of the power that he has to forgive you of your sin and then to redeem you and to set you free. And so I just want you to just imagine bringing some of the weight, some of this issue, and just laying it at the altar and being able to walk away knowing that God's got it. God's got this. Whatever you're dealing with, maybe there's just this absolute tension in your household because of devices and and the grip that it can have on, on a middle schooler or a high schooler or maybe even on an adult. And so there's this tension. I pray, Lord, that you would remove it. You would set the heart free, set the captives free. You have the power to forgive sins and you have the power to release the grip of addiction and so father we've been consumed with so many things and we're not the first generation just for thousands of years humanity has struggled and being pulled away from what matters most so father my prayer is this morning that we would be consumed with you consumed with our Savior Jesus, consumed with the gospel, consumed with making him known. May your name be great. May your name be great in and through us. And Father, may we understand that you have given us anything that we have so we can make your name great. Thank you, Jesus. It's in Christ's name we pray. And everybody said together, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Good start today to this series. Thank you all for being here. If you came prepared to give, uh, to give today, if you came prepared to give and uh, uh, offer your tithes and offerings, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and get that ready now. If you're a guest with us, don't feel obligated. Uh, in a second, we're going to pass what we call our joy buckets, and it's our chance to give back to God and give back to the ministries that that that, um, that He ha has provided us the opportunity to invest in local ministry, church plants, global partnerships, and so um, if you have your encounter card, um, you can get that ready right now. If you uh, want to fi finish getting that ready on your on the app. Uh, you can do that. 
if you are a guest with us today, if you're new here, there is a sign to my right that says new here. And, um, and I, I would love to meet you over here below that sign, give you a little gift for being with us today, and, and, and just get to meet you, put a, put a name with a face and a chance to connect with you a little bit and your family. And so um, let me pray over the offering, and the guys will pass the buckets. Father, thank you for the opportunity to invest in our community, invest in church plants, um, some around the metro Atlanta area, Oregon, New York, um, Romania, um, Egypt, uh, places where uh, you've allowed us to partner with people. So we pray that you would bless these gifts to support those ministries. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So they're going to pass the buckets on the side areas. If you don't mind helping me, if you're in the middle section to my right, your left, pass that bucket across and you take and drop your offering or your card into that bucket. And um, while they're doing that, I do want to make sure you are aware that we have a couple of major events coming up for uh, this summer. Uh, one of those is Summer Jam, which is our uh, kids camp, and that is June 11th through the 13th. We want you to go online and sign up your kids um, for kids camp at Summer Jam. You can go onto the website to do that, and then our students are going to camp. Um, up in South Carolina, June 17th, I believe, through uh, uh, 22nd, I believe. And so uh, make sure that you are a part of that. And then our kids are going to be singing on Mother's Day. And so make sure you are aware of how your child from PK, pre-K up until fifth grade can be a part of that special Mother's Day celebration. So, amen. And hey, y'all stand, and I'm going to pray over you. Lord. Would you bless us as we go from here? Um, Lord, help us be consumed with you more than anything else in our life. Lord, may help us to make your name great in this world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you guys.